Finding the right keyboard is a lot like finding the right glitter encrusted case for your phone. Choose poorly or the consequences will be dire. So it's important that you know exactly what you're looking for and uh, it'll save you from maybe wasting money buying the wrong piece of gear. So basically what I'm using right now is a Casio Privia series keyboard. Now, the number one thing that you wanna know going into this is what you want your goals to be. Do you want just something that you can maybe like perform with or something that you wanna record with? What kind of recording you're gonna do? All these questions, the sooner you answer them, the more you can kind of get into what you're specifically looking for. But the main decision you have to make right off the bat is the amount of keys that you go with. Now, a full-size keyboard like this is 88 keys. That means it has the exact same amount of keys as you know, like a grand concert piano, something like that. In fact, in the movie Back to the Future, they made the DeLorean have to travel 88 miles per hour to go back to the past because they thought that music was one of the best ways to bridge the past with the present. Very fun fact. It's not really true. I just made it up, but it kind of works. So the other kind of iterations you'll see in keyboards, MIDI controllers, stuff like that are 25 keys, 49 keys, 61 keys, okay? So if maybe you're just like uh, like getting into production and you want something with notes on it, 25 keys might be the way to go. I personally think 88 keys is, is it because it's not like you're gonna ever find a keyboard with more keys than that. So you kind of have everything that you need, but sometimes space is a consideration. Now, if you kind of see the difference between like a 61 key keyboard and an 88 key keyboard, you're really just kind of like eliminating the lowest eight and the highest eight-ish notes uh, from your playing. And honestly, I don't really play this note down here unless I know I'm around somebody with a, key, with a 61 key keyboard and I just kind of do that to shade them. But uh, I think 88 keys is the way to go. Uh, and that really kind of gets uh, us into the difference between an actual keyboard, like a performance keyboard, and a MIDI controller. So what a MIDI controller does is you hit a note and it sends usually through USB now. Like if you ever have, if you see a keyboard that has a USB jack on it, that's pretty much uh, like 99% most likely that that is its MIDI output. So you hit a note on the key, or you hit a key on the keyboard, and then it triggers a sample in like a DAW, like Logic or, or Contact for Native Instruments, something like that, to recreate that same key. It's actually not transmitting any audio, it's just transmitting a signal saying where you played it and how hard you played it. Which, that can be different from keyboard to keyboard too. That's where pressure sensitivity comes into uh, your playing and also called the action of a keyboard. So one thing that I think is probably the most important factor in choosing the right keyboard after deciding how many keys uh, you want or can have space for is the actual pressure sensitivity, otherwise known as the action, sometimes known as velocity sensitivity, really just the feel of the keys. So that's why it's important to kind of like maybe get your hands on one before you just buy one sight unseen. Uh, again, this Casio Privia one has this thing that's called like hammer action is one term that you might use. Uh, I know Roland, I think, has one called ivory touch. But that's really just a way that the action of the board is kind of the resistance of it and the bounce back to how the keys feel. Some MIDI controllers specifically, and actually some keyboards, which I've seen which are awful, have absolutely no pressure sensitivity, and it's just hitting a piece of plastic. Uh, there's no give to it. It doesn't matter how hard you hit it, how soft you hit it, it's gonna generate the same note. So you want something with different velocity sensors that will kind of like respond to the dynamics of your playing, okay? So again, with MIDI, you can actually kind of alter that stuff after the fact, but uh, most, that's why I'm a big fan of buying performance keyboards or digital pianos and using them as MIDI controllers because I generally feel they have better action, which is gonna translate over to if you wanna use an external program uh, to use MIDI anyways. And again, just another note on MIDI, it's you're not using any of the actual sound from your, your keyboard. Like none of the actual built-in sounds will matter. It's just what you plug it into. And that also kind of deals with dealing with speakers. Not all keyboards are gonna have built-in speakers. In fact, some of the higher-end ones don't have built-in speakers. I think if you're, getting, if you're just getting started, I would recommend looking for something with built-in speakers because you just wanna do something plug and play just to kind of get you on the instrument and playing. Even if it's just adding an extra step of having to plug it into an amp or having to plug in a pair of headphones or having to turn your computer on so you can only hear it MIDI, I think that extra step can be kind of a deterrent uh, to practicing. So I'm a big fan of, at least when you're starting out, getting something with speakers. The quality of the speakers is incredibly dynamic between different models. Again, I personally, I think the Casio Privia stuff is fine. Uh, especially for the money, 
I've had this keyboard for over like 10 years and I'm actually gonna probably upgrade it soon. The only reason being is not because it doesn't feel great is because the actual, there's been corrosion on where I plugged the sustain pedal in. So it doesn't, it's kind of finicky. It doesn't work all the time, but I mean, solid keyboard I've had for 12 years for kind of, you know, a relatively inexpensive one. Now, if I were to upgrade again, I'm not going to get so far into like the actual individual models, but I kind of like the feel of the Roland keyboards, like the FP series, the RD series specifically has like amazing, incredible feeling keys, but they're more expensive. Again, you can get into all that stuff and, you know, take days just kind of sorting through it. But you do want to be aware that there is a difference in how different keys will feel between different manufacturers, et cetera, et cetera. As far as the features on the keyboard, something you're looking for is really just, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want just one solid stage piano type thing with not a lot of features? Then you're probably going to look at a slimmer, more compact unit. Something like this with a digital LED screen will kind of tell you maybe what notes you're playing. You can bank through kind of seemingly limitless amounts of different sounds. Like if you want to make it sound like an electric piano or an organ or, or whatever. Usually I've found on the less expensive pianos, those sounds are all kind of cheesy. I mean, I guess they're kind of cool to have, but I, I haven't used them in years. I almost always think the software is going to be a better choice for you. That's why MIDI capability is pretty important. Uh, another thing is some of them have built-in stands, which are kind of cool. Like I know a lot of the Yamaha series and those Roland FP series ones have those, which if you're just gonna kind of keep it in a house, that's cool. Otherwise, maybe that's kind of annoying. If you wanna try to gig it, put it in like a, like a gig bag or something like that, carry it around. But I know some of the bulkier ones like this kind of shake depending on the stand that you have. So all these things kind of play uh, an important factor in finding the right keyboard for you, especially the onboard instructions, depending on what you do. Again, like uh, the Yamaha, the motifs are awesome because they're like incredible just sonic workstations that you can track uh, different instruments into. You can make entire compositions just on the board itself. Again, those are pricier. So maybe if you wanna take more of a production element, you can look into one of the uh, sequencers or workstations. If that stuff doesn't matter to you at all, just get a slim performance keyboard that, you know, they're trying to not have big LED screens just to kind of make it more portable, stuff like that. Those are important. Some keyboards or MIDI controllers specifically will have little pads kind of built into them. I know the Native Instruments ones uh, do that, the Akai ones uh, have that to kind of give like an MPC style feel that maybe you can program drums uh, into stuff like that. A lot of, uh, mo I would say most even have drums built into them as far as like different metronomes, stuff like that. Some of them are Bluetooth. There's a million different things. Again, I think the most important ones are decide how many keys you want, make sure you know the feel of it, like how the action is and just make sure it's compatible with what you want to do, whether it be just MIDI, whether it be something with built-in speakers, whether it's something that doesn't have speakers that, that you can output to an amp, uh, that you can Bluetooth to a speaker, something else. But yeah, those I think are the primary functions and what you're looking for when you are buying your first digital keyboard, piano, whatever you want to call it, anything like that. And just a quick interjection on synthesizers, okay? A lot of times, if you don't have any experience with this stuff, you'll look at a synth and it might look like a keyboard because it has a key bed with like a million different like knobs and switches that you can do. That's more, that's kind of a different animal entirely, especially the analog ones. A lot of times you can only, they're monophonic, which means you can only play one note at a time and it's not really meant to be played like a piano. Whereas a digital piano and a keyboard, the primary thing is kind of like to replicate a piano. A synthesizer is a totally different animal where you're kind of uh, messing with like the voltage of the electricity of the signal and stuff like that. And again, we could go down a real deep and dark rabbit hole with those, but uh, just a quick disclaimer on the difference between a synth and a keyboard. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions or anything you wanna to add to the conversation, leave it in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, uh, the website or the comment section, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.